It was all thanks to producer Tominichi Otsuki, who made sure to greenlight any idea Arno came up with. As both of them felt the industry became stagnant, Arno going as far to say the Mechadron was outdated, and that he'd like to do a robot anime on television that a toy company wouldn't sponsor. This is exactly what happened when producer Otsuki went to an unnamed toy company to pitch the idea. あのね、おつきくん。これはどういう Okay, yeah, in 1994, these designs weren't exactly stacking paper, but what made them so unique? Its sleek humanoid design, for one, gives the impression it's alive from episode 2, when we see that beneath its metallic shell is something born of flesh. I was inspired by Japanese demons. I gave them a modern appearance, but such characters have been around for a long time. It's also hard to avoid the parallels between Unit 1 and the God Warrior from Nausicaa. Even thematically, they're closer to Kaiju than Mecha, but unlike Nausicaa's animation, there was no heavy expectations here. It was going to be a small-time animation. I think it's going to be more cult anime than Nadia, because I don't think there's ever going to be an anime that has that kind of feel to it. After all, Nadia was on national public television at peak time for the whole family. How is it going to beat that? This show is going to be for otaku. Maybe it would be a six episode OVA. Okay, maybe not. Uh, 26 episodes on television. That way it has more chance for exposure. But Arno's studio had very little chance of actually finishing a 26 episode show on its own. Originally, I didn't plan on making Neon Genesis Evangelion at Gainax, but another company. King Records, who was the production's main sponsor, shared this interest, but I wanted to show respect for the place I worked. However, it was impossible for Gynex to create a TV series by itself in 1995, so we had the support of other companies. Tatsunoko would help Gynex throughout the show, alongside outsourcing a few episodes here and there, but we'll get back to that later. But in terms of themes, Ava would speak directly to Mecha fans. I guess a theme would be what I'm thinking about at the moment, thinking about the complexes that anime fans, including myself, have. What makes us happy? How can I be happy? Arno had just endured four years of depression, but there was a level of optimism in him now as he approached this new project, a new lease for life. <laughs> The Cruel Angel thesis is too iconic for its own good. Its catchiness is only outnumbered by the number of parodies it inspired. It also introduces the typography design of the world, which becomes part of the story in itself. A factor so successful in branding that it became hard for the team to use Con Ichikawa's typography in other works. Or as they call it, suffering from success. It is groundbreaking in the sense that they use kanji with attention to typographic matters. I was aiming for the coolness of a thing. Yet if there's one factor not well explored, I'd say it's probably the editing. Sharp, fast cuts with an overstimulating use of information could describe Arno's style. This is what literary critic Hiroki Asuma believes to be the case. It resembles a music video as it flows from each beat of the track. You gotta think this was back in the classic age of negative cutting, and it could take up to 10 hours to cut one episode of Evangelion. And they kind of felt bad about that because their Tatsunoko editor was on the older side, so they learned from the staff how to cut it themselves, and they used the three old editing systems in Gainax to cut the latter half of the show on their own. So that meant that Masayuki, Tsuturumaki, and Arno would edit the second half on their own. <laughs> Then we reduce the number of character drawings and use more in the battle scenes. In Ava, we used fewer than 4,500 cells, but it looked like we used 6,000. 
That's because we did that trick. In TV anime, there's a limit of pictures and 30 minutes, so you can't move the characters around as much as you'd like. So where do you look for the best visual efficiency when you can't move the characters? I think it's the moment when the cut changes. Holding frames is a staple of the show, daring to go far longer than anyone else, to focus on the stillness of an important moment. Arno once said, animation is also a world of pauses. But this didn't start in Ava. Nadia paved the way with its starkest moment. The production became like improv. While they had an outline, things adapted over time, like the creation of episode 4, which did not exist in the pitch. But editor Sasukawa, the man with more writing credits than anyone else, but the director, said that it was important to wrap up the first arc of the show, about why Shinji continues to fight. Because of this approach, the writing sessions would take five or six hours, with some of the screenwriters calling them a judgement day. As the staff gradually joined in, and when someone's guitar began to play, the drums and the bass changed in response to the ad-libbing, the sense of live performance came alive in Ava. The end of the performance is when the broadcast is over. That's why I can't start the next script until the previous one's finished. It takes me longer than in a normal production. As they went with the flow, the show changed in its second half with the influence of its team in both writers and animators. For example, when Production IG animated episode 13, many of the concepts came from Mitsuo Iso, an animator at the company. It's one of the few Angel-related episodes to not feature an AV unit battling, and that's funny coming from a studio who specializes in technical, mechanical drawing. Episode 11 was animated by legendary studio Ghibli, with lots of intricate touches you'd expect from them. <laughs> However, we have a problem. Ghibli was not prepared for the world of TV deadlines. They couldn't quite match up with Sadamoto's style either, thus theirs bleeds through. They fell way behind, and Arno himself had to walk down to the studio to scold producer Suzuki. The deadlines were tight, and they became harsher as they went on. As Arno's protégé once said, The schedule was an utter disaster, and the number of cells plummeted, so there were some places where unfortunately the quality suffered. They had 14 episodes to produce in 6 months, so it was really only possible because of how dedicated the team were. It was a real trial by fire, and while the team was suffering, the viewership necessarily wasn't, as the show had started to gain traction through word of mouth, especially in the second half when the show started to tackle the psychology of its characters. I wrote about myself. My friend lent me a book on psychological illnesses and it gave me the shock as if I finally found what I needed to say. The characters of Ava are all composite personalities based around my personality. Shinji Kun is my current me. But I wouldn't make it out as simple as this character is this person or this represents this within the show because Arno has been back and forth about what represents what in some questionable areas. Gendo is your self-insert, right? Well, partly. He's bad. He's sometimes charming. That's my dick. It's the only little and charming part of my body. From the beginning, there was an attempt to bring characters away from stereotypical portrayals, especially the women, Arno referencing reading a lot of romance novels to get a better idea of how women think. But they also came from the internal mind of the director. Then there's Shinji, a grounded take on an actual teenage mecha pilot. While it does call back to Gundam's Amuro Rei, Shinji is so vulnerable in comparison without the hot-blooded temperament of Gainax's prior work. He's the closest portrait to the viewer. うん、だから<笑> In Japan, Shinji stayed at the top of Animage's polls for about two years, while the perspective in the West differed. Maybe whiny characters are more relatable, since all kids seem to do nowadays is complain and moan about absolutely everything. But Shinji takes his concept and pushes it about 10 miles too far. 
because he seems to be suffering from a rare unexplained disease in which his balls got so fucking irritated with him that they decided to just pack their bags and leave, leaving Shinji as a confused underage girl pretending to be a boy. Shinji, to quote a famous fanboy one-liner, is a giant wuss. He cries, he whines, he cowers, he chants a constant mantra about how he mustn't run away. I'm pretty sure that everyone has heard about the self-pitying emo that is Shinji. Hell, people have been driven away from seeing NGE because of Shinji alone. His presence cannot be ignored, and his constant, introspective put-downs are nothing short of groan-inducing tedium. If only he could have actually stopped blaming himself for everything and actually grew a backbone every once in a while, he would have been a much better character, but instead we got what we got. Fuck him. Fuck anybody. Fuckless fucking fuck. I are sad. God damn it, we'd be doing this for 15 years. Well, it wouldn't be so bad if the pilot did a better job. You mean humanity's last hope who passed out in Peter's pants? That's what I'm talking about. Now, this sort of reaction could come from an insecurity in its viewers. After all, there was one man that once said, and yeah, this is like a vocal minority, even if it was at once upon a time, hard to get away from. That sort of critique of Shinji's arbitrary sense of masculinity, even though that's something that the show is obviously questioning. The word man is also created by a world of ideas. If you don't think of yourself as a man, there's no such thing as a man. I think it's a very vague thing. I think that's why people have to keep saying if you're a man, or if you were a man, over and over again for a long time. If we don't constantly remind ourselves of this, men will disappear. All right, Shinji is between adulthood and childhood, and then he's thrown into a war, and he's not the best performing child soldier, for obvious reasons. But I believe the show is less so going for Power Rangers, and maybe more so something like the Persian Gulf War. Even with the down-to-earth, traumatized characters, I wouldn't say Ava lands outside the mecha genre foray of power fantasy. It's no deconstruction, as we still have a pilot with no training whose skills are absurd and goes above and beyond to be heroic, even against people who've wronged him. But then the key difference is what happens when Shinji tries to be a man and gets cocky. Ava is not a show that rewards the arrogance of its characters. It's not like Michael Bay's Ava. This tastes like shit, but I'm gonna finish this because that's what a man does. I do find this parody most telling of audience expectations, especially when it comes to the quote about being a man, to not question societal expectations. Because the audience wants you to appeal to that kind of power fantasy, you know, the one that Bay is accused of, uh, sort of military subsidized jerk off fantasy for teenage boys. And in response, Bay famously said, I make movies for teenage boys. Oh, what a crime. It may surprise you to hear that Arno actually holds a similar sentiment to the work he does. The best way to get an original project through would be to make a robot, space, or beautiful young girl one. Because I thought these categories would have the best product value. It's easy to get sponsors to pay for it. You need to understand that Japanese animation is an industry that is, for the most part, male, and it's quite evident everything is made for their gratification. Animation is on certain points very close to the pornography industry. Both know the expectation of their role, but Arno is the one who pushed against it, while painting a big target on his head. The finale was a bold avant-garde stage play, one that didn't answer things clearly. As Hiroki Asuma said, They want to be Shinji or Asuka, but the later part diverges from such a typical pattern. The reviews and comments of anime fans show their disappointment with the later episodes, since there's no hope for a happy ending and no space for their identification with characters. So it's telling the audience to live beyond their anime. However, Anu could never have expected that one specific complaint letter from cultural critic Eiji Otsuka would spread the debate nationwide. Man, these Ava fans are sick. The debate did nothing but bolster Ava's popularity, with its ratings hitting over 10% of Japanese households in its final episode. 
And the response wasn't all flames either. There was a real mix of confusion. But wherever you stood in the Ava debate, it was a real social phenomenon. And now journalists were eating up the chance to interview Arno and ask him questions about the finale. A lot of people from the online service are stubborn and unable to think in a flexible way. The great majority of people judge only the final result. From my perspective, we did everything we were able to do. On Evangelion's last two episodes, which upset many fans... I have no problem with them. If there's a problem, it's with you guys. Too bad. Actually, the TV version ends beautifully, internally and externally. It's falling into place beautifully. The episode 25 and 26 that aired on TV were a direct reflection of how I was feeling at that point in time. So I'm very happy with them. I don't regret it. I hear there's many straightforward verbal attacks online. On the other hand, this last episode recorded the highest viewership of Evangelion, and the viewers who do not usually watch anime said, Evangelion is amazing. My current mood? I'm very tired. Those who criticize the show are either negatively biased or immature, narrow-minded internet fans. Evangelion is my life. I have put everything I know into this work. This is my entire life, my life itself. I'm just sorry to hear people say that it's a lazy episode. I can't help but laugh. There are staff members who have overworked it, but none of them have been lazy. Again, those people might get pissed at me if I say these things, but I feel sad for those who can't feel it. I'm reworking episode 25 and 26 that will be sold on later disc and video next year. But as far as episode 26 goes, that will be a complete revision so that it will be more visual. I'll do it again by deconstructing the original plan. Yes, I cut them off. When I saw episode 25 after first putting it together, I thought, I'm a genius. However, when I re-edited it and re-watched it afterwards, I was crushed. It was no good after all. I was embarrassed by the lack of my ability. In the process of making Evangelion, I found out what kind of person I am. I acknowledge I am a fool. Well, I, that was that was great, and I'm sure that made total amounts of sense. Right, GoFundMe. We're running a GoFundMe on the Carrie Carno interviews from the Blu-ray, and this is to dispel misinformation. It's a lot of information. There's many, many interviews in here. I want to get the major ones all translated properly and available to everyone to just get rid of this idea that Arno left the production to make sure people understand the clearness of the history and, you know, just get it out to people because there's some really interesting stories in here. And if you want to support that, go on the GoFundMe. You can add to it. Uh, you give enough, uh, you give an extra bit of bonus there. You'll get on the list. You'll see it as it's translated. And then it'll get into the video and it will make everything um, a better experience for everyone. And we can finally close the door on that chapter of the internet that started long ago when someone guessed what happened during this production in the early 2000s. And has never been able to escape it. Yeah, all right, on to the Patreon stuff. So if you want access to the rest of the video, that's probably 80 minutes I think we've done beforehand to this part, you can get them all on Patreon. I think that's available to everyone if you want to support that way. Also, End of Ava, that's already been done. It's, it's on there, it's on there now. I finished that section. So if you want to see what happens next, because you're dying to find out, you can get it straight away. I've got to thank 
basically everyone who's been patient with me so far this has been taking i say this every time but this took way longer than expected still going i'm in the conk i'm in, i'm completely stuck in cost fall fallacy to sewn right now and um i'm hoping these people have let me survive through that period and that would be jay alex morati floyd the professional paul steven's mum, chunks doji joven mgt mtg fox I, I, I've never really asked what you'd actually want me to call you, but we'll, we'll go for that now. You can leave a comment if you if you have a better idea. Sub Sofa, Takayuki Suzuki, and as well as everyone else on the screen, thank you so much for your ultimate patience and Sisterhood. I'm doing the best I can. I'll see you all real soon, I swear. We're getting there. We're getting there.